Hey everyone, my name is Ethan Etchart. Thank you for checking out this YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about nutrition. And so first I'm gonna give a little bit of some background info on me. I'm a personal trainer, fitness coach. I prioritize in helping those in business and entrepreneurs maintain their fitness so that way they can reach their goals and build better businesses. And so like I said, today we're gonna to talk about nutrition and I'm gonna talk about five crucial tips that everybody should be aware of. I actually right now have some avocado toast with protein powder on it. It's quite the combo. So the first thing we gotta know, everyone's gotta know about their nutrition is they need to know how many calories they're burning every day without exercise. And this is referred to as your basal metabolic rate. And so this is an important metric to know because all of our bodies are different. You know, it's gonna be unique to every single person out there. And that's gonna depend on your height, your weight, your body fat percentage, gender, and age. So for instance, if you were a 5'3", 130 pound female, 25 years old, and you're a dancer, so you're kind of fit, you're not going to be burning the same amount of calories as someone who's six foot three. 220 pounds in their 45 year old power lifter per se. So that's pretty obvious, right? But if you're new to exercise, you're gonna to wanna to know these things because how are you gonna know how much food you should be eating every day? And even if you've been training your whole life and you aren't aware of this number, how are you gonna know what type of food to intake to reach the goals you have? All right, so how do we find our basal metabolic rate then? Well, there's so many different calculated formulas and machines out there that can be helped to help you understand what your basal metabolic rate is and if you have access to certain uh, machines like that then go ahead and do that but for most people watching they're not going to know what i'm talking about but you can find some of these machines like in supplement stores and at some fitness centers so but what i'm going to let you guys know are about these awesome calculators that are super easy to use on the internet all you got to do is you're going to type in your height your weight your age your sex and that's going to show you an estimated basal metabolic rate for your specifications. All right, so I'm gonna share two sources that you guys can use. One is from musclehacking.com, and the other one is from BMI Calculator. They're completely free, and I'm gonna provide them in the link below in the description of the video. Just type them in, and yes, it's not gonna be exactly accurate because it's not gonna know your body fat percentage, like if you were to use one of the ones in the gym or the nutrition store, but it's still gonna give you a good range, and you wanna be aware of what your range is. Okay, and so I'll use myself as an example. So with the muscle hacking calculator, it showed my BMR, basal metabolic rate, at 1,728 calories. And the one from the BMI calculator.net calculator, it said that I was estimated to have a BMR of 1,812 calories. And then when I used the machine in the nutrition store, it actually had me at 1,868 calories. Okay, and so now you're probably wondering like, how are those two, calculators that are free on the internet, why are they underestimating what the machine said is the amount of calories I'm burning every day for my BMR? And a lot of that has to do with the context of your fitness and your body fat percentage. And like I mentioned, the ones on the internet, they're, they're not gonna know your body fat percentage. So they're just probably gonna put you like at an average body fat percentage to run the calculator. Whereas when I've used the machines, um, in body is what it's called, that can see what my body fat percentage is. And since I have low body fat percentage and a lot more muscle mass than the average person for my height, age, and weight, then that's gonna show that I'm burning more calories. And so why do I burn more calories if I have more muscle? Well, this has to do with metabolism. And so muscle cells, they demand a lot metabolically to fuel them every day. They're just, they require a lot of energy and so, the more muscle you have on your body, your body's gonna be burning more calories even when you're doing absolutely nothing compared to someone that has way higher amounts of fat and lower amounts of muscle. Okay, so now that we know how many calories our body burns every day without doing anything, now we have to measure our exercise habits. So that's number two nutrition tip. You need to know how many calories you're burning on a daily basis. And obviously this can be pretty subjective, but there are ways to know how much activity you're getting just by doing a little bit of some reporting on your daily habits. And so there's also another calculator too you can try out. It's called TDEE calculator and TDEE stands for total daily energy expenditure. And so that would be just your BMR adding up your exercise activity. And so that's another way you can do it to have a second frame of reference to see like how many 
exercise or calories you're probably burning throughout a day. And so the National Institute of Health for the US, they have this calculator that's gonna simplify this process even more. I'm gonna include that calculator here in the description below. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna assess kind of like what your activity level is at work and in your free time. And so that way they can kind of like under, they can estimate how many calories you're probably burning during exercise, during activity throughout the day. And then it's gonna recommend how many calories you should be consuming based upon what your BM, BMR is and your goals. And then if you really wanna get really picky, there's these things called MET calculators or metabolic energy equivalent. Uh, calculators and so what's gonna do is you're gonna basically write in the things that you do every day it's like sweeping the floor doing the dishes you know running on the treadmill for 30 minutes and it's gonna add up all that stuff and that's gonna show how many calories you're supposedly burning every day just by all the activities you do including your work and including your leisure time so a little more complicated if you're gonna do that that's why I just recommend doing the basic TE calculator or the one from the National Institute of Health so that way you just kind of know based off your exercise history and what your job does. Okay, so now that we know how many calories we burned without exercise, and we know about how many calories we were burning while exercising, now let's talk about food. And the number three nutrition tip I'm gonna talk about today is just staying away from processed foods. And what I want you to remember about processed foods is yes, of course, they're going to be cheap, and they're gonna last a long time. So it's obviously, it always seems like the smart decision. It's like the best bang for your buck. But you have to understand the context of your health in the long term too. So the first two tips had to do about quantity of food. Now I'm gonna be talking about quality of food. And so what we need to understand is that the quality of food is going to be obviously our most important factor. And so I'm sure we're becoming aware of the negative effects of eating these ultra processed foods. But to prove my point even further, I just want you to think of eliminating the consumption of processed foods as literally probably your number one priority regarding your health at all. And so here's why. Processed foods are the number one link to accumulating visceral fat on the body. And visceral fat is the fat that is in our thorax or like the space where all our organs are housed, such as you know the entire digestive system, your heart, lungs, kidneys also. So think of like that term beer belly, that's, that's visceral fat. And so visceral fat is connected directly with higher rates of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and all-cause all mortality. So basically meaning that if the more fat you have around your gut, it means you're going to be dying way sooner than, than those that, who do not have that excess visceral fat. And this is being studied pretty extensively right now, and the peer-reviewed research for there is showing its value right now. So this is not a theory. The two phenomenon are essentially connected entirely. And so how can we avoid consuming processed foods? So easy ways, when you go to the grocery store, you just need to pick up the whole foods that surround the perimeter of the building. That's where the whole natural foods are always placed around the perimeter because they have a short shelf life, they're fresh. And so they need to be able to, people need to get them quick. And then everything else in the middle, that's all the processed stuff typically. So that's a very basic approach to know whether you're getting the processed stuff. Obviously, too, if it's in a package and you can see it's totally been a package you could have in your, you know, you could have it in your house for like eight months and still be good, that's obviously super processed, too. You know, and if you can't afford to buy fresh whole foods, I totally understand that. Obviously, that's what you need to care about. Number one is your livelihood and just putting a roof over your head. But if you have the resources necessary to go grocery shopping in general, then you got to be avoiding the processed foods. And you just got to keep in mind that big food industry like those companies Kraft and Kellogg's and whatever all of them they're making money off you and they're making money off the psychology of selling addicting substances is what it is and so you got to understand that a game is being played with you when you go into the store and that's where you're gonna have to just you got to keep your mind straight and realize what your health needs in the long term. And that's why if you just stay on the perimeter, you're not going to be getting distracted by everything that's going on in the middle of the grocery store and all the snacks and all the candies and, you know, things like that. Okay, and so nutrition tip number four, eliminating refined added sugars, okay? So this is going to kind of play a hand in hand with ultra processed foods. So sugar, as we know, this is the most addicting substance on the planet. Because when we you know, consume it, it's converted quickly into glucose for energy in our body. 
and you know historically we didn't have grocery stores everywhere like so much food available we were so in the context of our bio biological history finding a lot of sugar was extremely rare and it was something that we needed to succeed and live because it was quick energy like i mentioned and so now it's like we're our biological systems are being hacked by what's going on in the food industry and so you can see sugar itself is not necessarily the main offender what's going on is the excess consumption of it especially when it's super refined because sugar from fructose from fruits is absolutely amazing highly effective and healthy and especially when you consume it in moderation in a balanced diet fruit is incredible and it should be consumed because it's a whole food source and so what's the deal with sugar in 2022 well it's the re these refined sugars these ones that are made in the lab and they're added to so many of our favorite foods too and especially in the ultra processed foods that i talked about earlier and just to bring some science in on those refined sugars those that are consumed or added into those processed foods they are also linked to type 2 diabetes kidney disease, hypertension, and obesity. I'm gonna include some of the links to the studies below, but that's what the science is showing on those type of items. And so let me give you a little lesson here quick. So why is this sugar so much of a problem? Well, it has to do with because we're putting the body in this hyperglycemic state because we're consuming all this sugar all the time. And so this is going to escalate many metabolic issues because the body is now at a homeostasis. Okay, and so when our body's out of homeostasis and now we're in this hyperglycemic state, excess sugar, our liver has enough. Our liver is what converts the food into glucose for energy in our body. And so when it's full of energy and our muscle cells, our fat cells, they have all the glucose too. Now we have just too much in our body. And this is why we you know, gain a lot of weight and this is what's gonna to add to that visceral fat. And then the theory is still kinda of out there on why the visceral fat is so bad for you, but it would probably make a lot of sense because it's literally squeezing inside your organs all of the biological processes that need to happen for your digestive system all the time. It has too much fat around it, too much compression, and that's kinda of what it looks like to me. It just seems like there's too much going on in there. And it doesn't seem like your body likes that. And that's why disease is created around it. Okay, and so it's going to be hard to avoid these added sugars 100%. I totally get that. And so what's some practical advice? I would say you need to keep your added sugar consumption under 30 grams per day. And this is what is actually recommended pretty frequently by a lot of um, experts out there. Those who are RDs, type that type of information. They're the ones saying like you don't want to be above 30 grams of added sugar every day and so this is going to also beg the question about zero calorie sweeteners and if these things are good substitutes or if they're healthy to consume and interestingly enough um, there was a systematic review of 17 randomized controlled trials this was done by the journal of american medical association and they did not technically associate zero calorie sweeteners with evidence of weight gain but but don't get too far ahead of yourself here because these artificial sweeteners, especially those like high fructose corn syrup and like MSG and aspartame and asulfame K is the other one. These are some of the worst things that you can actually consume for your health because they are also associated with risks in developing some cancers and especially high fructose corn syrup. That's the crazy one. That's the one. It's also linked with coronary heart disease as well. So artificial sweeteners i don't know you gotta be careful with those things like i let you know the risks be careful so personally my approach is just to avoid anything that has artificial sweeteners and added sugars it's actually pretty simple to do this when you go and buy a product or go to the store you just look at the nutrition label they even have included now it was required by the fda to include how many added sugars were added and they did that in like the last four or five years or something like that which is awesome that the FDA required that now. And then, and then in the ingredients, you're always gonna be able to find those artificial sweeteners. You're gonna, it's, it's the ones I just mentioned. Those are the most popular ones. It's aspartame, esulfame K, high fructose corn syrup, and then MSG. So watch out for those. Ooh, and the number five nutrition tip I'm gonna talk about today is alcohol. Oh, alcohol. What a deep history we all have with it. So alcohol is, it's crazy. I mean, I've actually written an article about it previously. I'll, re 
I'll include that link here in the description because I have a lot to say about alcohol. I've looked into it so extensively because I personally have a deep history with it. You know, because alcohol is just so popular like in the culture that I've grown up in and and then also just in the United States in general, every like a fun event has to do with alcohol and stuff like that. So I don't know, it's a complex issue. And so I wanna share a lot of the dangers of alcohol consumption. And so that you guys are aware of it because I believe this is one of the most important things that you can do for your health that is seriously going to take you to a much more meaningful, fulfilling livelihood by reducing alcohol consumption, especially just the way you're gonna feel physically. So to start, to show you some of the bad things about alcohol, okay? Heavy alcohol consumption, it's linked with type two diabetes due to decreased pancreatic function, and also you're gonna have decreased performances of hormones, such as estrogen, testosterone, and insulin. And this alcohol consumption can lead to earlier onset of diseases such as atherosclerosis, which is the hardening of arteries. This is what leads to heart disease. This is what leads to heart attacks. And okay, so then we have that issue, right? Not to mention, we also need to understand that there are huge connections with alcoholism and depression, which reminds me of Dr. Andrew Huberman. He's this awesome neuroscientist. He has a super good podcast. He just had an episode talking about alcoholism and what he was saying is that in regard to the links with depression, that you would think alcohol, a lot of people think alcohol, it's like you take a drink or whatever, it takes off the edge, your anxiety lowers. When actually, when it sets up future worse problems with anxiety and depression mentally, so you think you're helping yourself out, when actually really you're gonna make yourself more stressed and more anxious in the future. And that doesn't have necessarily to do with the, like, with the hor with, uh, hangovers, it has to do with typically a neurotransmitter imbalance. Basically just meaning that alcohol is making your brain chemistry a little crazy. That's basically what it means. It's gonna make you more depressed, more anxious. And another point about alcohol too is think about all the fatal accidents. I mean, holy cow, we have like 80 or 90,000 car, fatal car accidents every single year and I'm not sure what the statistics are on how many of them are alcohol induced or involved, but I'm sure it's a huge percentage of it. And so obviously alcohol, it can be crazy for your health. And so you've got to understand like it can ruin you financially, mentally, you know, physically, all those things. So that's why this is such an important nutrition tip in my opinion, because your relationship with alcohol, especially if you live in a culture that you know, cherishes it and loves it and uses it all the time. You gotta have an awesome relationship with it and know your boundaries and know if you're gonna do it, that you're gonna only consume a certain amount. And so, and then if you grow up in a culture where people don't drink alcohol, then that's awesome. And if you're not into it and you've never been to it, then please keep doing that. That's what I think is going to make an incredibly amount of positive effect on your nutrition in the long term. And it's just something that's overlooked by a lot of people that want to keep drinking all the time. And so quick little story, one of my clients, he's literally been sober now for like seven months and he used to party like crazy. It was ruining his life. Not a great idea. He felt terrible and now I feel so good. And what he would always say when we were first like talking about alcohol in the beginning, he would always say that I can't think of literally one good thing that alcohol has done for me. Okay, so let's talk about if you're going to consume alcohol though. Um, right now, I believe it was at the FDA, they say that you're okay to have one to two drinks of alcohol a day. And that's be just because they know that they're do they're people are drinking in this country like crazy. Okay? But what Huberman Lab was talking about in that podcast is that that seven to 14 drinks, right? One to two a day in a week, you know, whether you do that all at the weekend or you have one a day and you just spread it out. Even those trends are going to be associated with what I was mentioning earlier, where you can have effects uh, with your metabolism, neurochemistry, brain function, and things like that. And so even if you're just consuming, you know, two drinks a day and you're doing that for years, you're actually, you know, giving yourself a lot of bad health. Whew. So what I tell my clients is honestly like two drinks a week, you know, it's like, and that's if you're gonna do it that's about it really if you're gonna go out on Saturday or Friday just have two and that's it because you're gonna feel it especially the healthier get you get 
you'll know that what you're doing is not a great idea. And I can use that, for instance, in my situation, I used to party like crazy and like drink a lot, like upwards of who knows how many, right? And now it's like I am barely drinking once in a month or like three months. And if I have more than like one or two and I do, I don't, I feel terrible because I, I know what it's like to feel good. <laughs> and that's what we want. At the end of the day, we just want to feel good. We want to feel comfortable. We want to feel healthy. And so that's going to end the video for what we're talking about for my five nutrition tips. And so one final note about this video, like we can get as complex as we want about nutrition. We could talk about, oh, should you be eating this much plant protein and this much broccoli, X, Y, Z, and all those things, right? But what I talked about today was literally just knowing how much your body is burning every day, you know, total energy expenditure, and then seriously just watching your consumption on the refined sugars, the processed foods, and alcohol. And those, honestly, just doing that, you're gonna live pretty healthily. Just doing those things, lowering the consumption of those, is dramatically going to improve your health and nutrition. It really will. And so that's the point I wanna make about nutrition is that we always wanna complicate it and we wanna say you need to eat this way and you need it this way and like this. But, but really it's just like, don't dig yourself into a hole. Because if you're just eating whole foods, you're not gonna dig yourself into a hole. You're gonna be perfectly fine because that's natural, real food. And if you're just eating fake food and you're eating added fake sugar all the time and you're slamming drinks, alcohol, it's like you're digging yourself into a hole every single day. Whereas if you just take a much more basic approach of just limiting the consumption of those things, you're just, you're gonna be so much healthier and so much more fit too. And you're gonna feel better mentally, all those things emotionally too. Like I mentioned, there's connections with depression and uh, alcohol. So just keep nutrition simple and that's your best bet. And so in my next video, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into some more important things about nutrition for my next five nutrition tips. Because in total, I have 10 tips. This is what I show my clients. This is what I want them to know about nutrition. These 10 things. And so this was the first five today where it was just all about simplifying it and just knowing what your body is going through. And then so the next five tips I'm gonna share, they're gonna be a little bit more complex, but honestly, I'm gonna simplify as much as possible because I want nutrition and everything to just feel comfortable for people. It doesn't need to feel like this crazy thing and, and like, you can't make a wrong decision. You can't make a good decision. It's, I want to just keep it straightforward. Okay. So check out that next video and thanks for watching. Like I said, I'm Ethan at Sharp Fitness. I am a personal trainer. Uh, I was in the Air Force previously five years. So I'm very familiar with all this type of stuff that has to do with staying fit mentally and physically. And so here I am now. I coach people and I'm an athlete and I'm getting more education alongside with that. So stay tuned for more content in regards to optimizing your health and well-being. Thanks for watching.